Beautiful. Okay, guys. Well, look, welcome to another Tuesday, New Training Tuesday. We either have a new personal development Tuesday or a new training Tuesday. So I think today, I don't know what today is going to be actually, what you'd refer to it as. Um, look, we'll we'll call it a new training Tuesday anyway. <laughs> I I can't seem to make up my mind. I go back and forth depending on what's going on in the day. So what are we going to talk about today? Today, first thing I want to do is say congratulations to James, who's not here. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, it's actually a great thing that he's not here. Uh, he's a granddad. So uh, he, I was hoping he was going to be here, but uh, he sent me a message a little while ago that he couldn't make it because his new grandson is coming home. So I'm really excited for James. You know, that's that's a fantastic. Um, I know he's excited. So big congratulations uh, to James. And I'm sure everybody else sends their best wishes as well and congratulations. So what are we going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about your story. We're going to start um, working on well, what your story is, because your story is really critical. Les Brown, as you know, Les Brown is one of my all-time favorites. If you're not familiar with Les Brown, he doesn't res resonate with everybody, but I think most people really like him. He's uh, he's known for his motivation, uh, the way he presents. He's just got a really uplifting. Um, nature about him and the way he speaks and he, he really gets you pumped up but uh les brown always says never make a point without a story and never tell a story without a point and i agree with that actually i think that's actually a really good saying um but it's 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 very true but today what that's what i want to start talking to you guys about because we're we're, we're going to get more into presenting and Eventually, well, I, I want to see you guys start doing some more presenting, a, a lot more presenting as we progress here. So, again, always remember that, though. Never make a point without a story and never tell a story without a point. So, you guys all know my story. Um, it's probably one of the first things you, you would have heard. I tell the story. Usually, I always tell it on session number one. I always tell it when I meet new groups, but again, it's it's very relevant. I, you know, it has a very very much a point. The point of it is primarily everything we're doing, as far as how the system was created, why the system created, how I began to um, introduce the system, all has to do with my story. So again, it's very relevant, but it's a great way. Of presenting when you when when you're doing presentations when you're talking to new prospects when you're talking to new uh your new clients the, uh, the new individuals that you're going to be working with or are working with always make sure that they know your story it makes you so much more relatable and we all have a story guys um it doesn't have to be anything amazing or life-changing or anything but we all have some story why we're here why we're involved with the network um you know taking time out of out of a tuesday to come in and do these trainings there's a reason for you it's part of your story your uh, your reason why so we heard the stories of four people the other day at the workshop for anybody who wasn't there um Four fantastic stories. I got to say, guys, I want to say a big thank you to Kareen, Sean, Linda, and Steve. Um, you guys were a real big help, real big help on on uh, on the workshop uh, the workshop on Saturday, and I really do. I appreciate it. And you all had great stories, all different. Each and every one of you has had a different story to tell. And you present it in your own unique way. But I tell you what, they were all powerful. You know, so well done to all you guys. I was, I was proud of you. I really was. You know, you, 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 you all did an amazing job. And you, I know you, um, you touched people. But not only, the, even though the people, maybe there wasn't that big of a crowd there. But 
it's it was recorded and people are going to hear your stories and people are going to be touched by your stories i can promise you that so look big thanks again it was really great uh keep working on them there I, it's always going to be a work in progress but uh I'm, you're going to get a lot more opportunities if you want and i'm hoping you will want to go ahead and share your stories and more because again I don't always want to be the one doing the presentations. I don't always want to be the one up front. Um, I don't mind it now, but you know, I want this thing to spread. And I want people out there sharing it. And I want people out there telling their stories and talking about their involvement with us and doing their presentations and their trainings. So again, you're, um, you all did a great job and everybody else listening today too. We want to start working on your story because we want to get you out there as well. So, and as you guys know, I just want to make note of that. I thought that was very clever. Um, your, your, your names, you made it fun. Um, and I tell you what it was really, what really resonated with me. Um, it shows the connection that you guys, the bond that you're connect, uh, you're connecting. So even though it was four, individual stories you all um primarily you showed that you're close you showed that you know you all made a connection and there's more to one source than just a system there's a community here and and i thought that was presented really well in a very clever way fun way um so again well done um, to all of you, and you all talked about it. Linda, you started talking about it, but Sean, you followed up. Um, you know, uh, Steve, Green, you all talked about your characters, and I thought it was really clever. And again, it it really showed that, you know, look, it's not just all about um, an opportunity, and it's not all just about um, you know self, you know, self help or personal growth or personal development. Yes, that's all a huge part of it. But we are a community. We are friends. We are actually all primarily, well, you know, we're, we're, we're well, I, I suppose, creating, you know, lasting relationships here, hopefully. And it's a fun place to be. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was really clever. So, well done, guys. I, I was really impressed with that. So, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to start working on our our personal development um, as far as with public speaking, because, look, a lot of people are, well, they're very nervous when it comes to doing any type of public speaking. And I don't blame you. Truthfully, I can't believe that I do as much public speaking as I do right now, because there was a time uh, many years ago that I would have been I would have been very um well, uncomfortable doing anything like this. I used to have, um, many years ago, before I got in really into sales training and things like that, I, I was always very uh, very um, self-conscious about doing any type of presentations. And I still, I tell you what, I find it very funny. I can get up and I can talk in front of hundreds of people if I don't know them. Or if I'm not, if they're not like my family or close friends or people I grew up with or things of that nature. But you get, you ask me to get up and make a toast at a wedding or anything like that, and I'm absolutely useless. I can't, I can't bear it. Uh, I don't like ever being uh, the center of attention or you know in big groups like that of of, of family and things. But uh, we we all have our own, I guess, little our own little. Uh, quirks and things like that but what i want to do is i want to play this video four tips to improve your public speaking and truthfully it's a little bit longer than normal it's about 12 minutes uh but i thought it was a very good one i looked at a good few and i want to pick one that i thought was really strong and again because i want you guys to get a lot more comfortable i want you to start really thinking about doing a bit of uh, public speaking and just Rather it be a short presentation, rather it be an interview, rather it be a training, a number of different places and we're going to talk about afterwards where we can do these um, public speaking events at. 
and uh, the opportunities to present uh, your presentation or talk about one source or talk about primarily anything you want. But what I want to do is I'm just going to play this out now. And um, afterwards, we'll have a quick chat about it. So sorry about that. Say, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. Anticipation is the ultimate advantage in business and in life. Like, you're not 100% sure what could happen if you keep going. You can do it. Tomorrow is going to be better. What do you tell people when they ask you, you know, how can I present like you? How can I get better? The thing that really, really helps is I've learned about the perspective, to change my perspective. So for example, I show up to give, and I always remind people that the, the most important thing about being an effective presenter, an effective speaker, is you have to show up with a giving attitude. You have to show up to give. You know something, you've seen something, you've done something, you've tried something that someone else thinks others need to hear. That's why they invited you to speak. The problem is the number of people who show up to take, to get. And you can see it. It's very plain to see. People ask a question and they say, you'll have to buy my book. Or you could just tell me the answer because you know the answer because you wrote the book, right? But clearly they're trying to drive book sales. It's a taking mentality. Every single slide of their PowerPoint has their Instagram, their email, their website, their Facebook. Well, clearly they want you to follow them. They want you to reach out. The last slide is their website and their email, right? They have a taking mentality. They come up and the first thing they do is tell you their credentials. Hi, my name is, you know, Dr. Blahdy Blah. I have six PhDs. I've worked for 55 companies. I advise CEOs and generals. And let me tell you a little something. It's about them. It's very easy and very quick to discern who's the giver and who's the taker. The best speakers, 100% of them, you look at all the top TED folks, you know, Sir Ken Robinson, Amy Cuddy, Brene Brown, right, Dan Pink, all of them. All of them are there to give. None of them want anything from anybody, not even your approval. No, nobody, I don't know any great speaker that stands in the backstage that goes, I'm going to get a standing ovation. You may get one if you earn it, if they decide that what you have given them is of value. But that's not the reason you show up. You show up to give. How many of you guys experience fear when you speak? How many of you, by a show of hands, know that public speaking is fundamental to your industry, your career, by show of hands. How many of you, by a show of hands, honestly speaking, experience a little bit of fear when we talk about public speaking? Raise your hand. And over the last three years, I've had the opportunity to travel the country and deliver presentations like this. And what I've picked up on is that there are certain patterns there are certain patterns and certain skill sets that, if applied, can make a public speech amazing. If you follow these principles that we're going to talk about today, I think, I don't care what industry you're part of, I don't care what work you're in, I don't care what year you are, I don't care how old you are, I believe if you apply these principles today, you can literally transform where you are and take the journey to where you want to be. Straightforward. I believe there's three principles, three A's of public speaking, three things that I wanted to leave you with today. And I believe if you take action on it, you're going to be like, oh my God, I'm glad I came. So number one, authenticity engages. November 2017, I was afforded the opportunity to give my first TEDx talk. And man, can I tell you, I was excited. You got to imagine a young professional starting out, ready, 26 years old. And I want to make this very clear. So I'm thinking to myself, and what I used to do is when I prepare, I would give a talk at least 100 times before I give it. Write that down. I, I give it mentally. I give it out. I talk to people conversationally in the shower. I'm like, OK, this is OK, all right. I'm going to do this, right? And I think to myself, PowerPoint or no PowerPoint? That's all I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, if I give this presentation, should I, should I use the PowerPoint behind me? Or should I just use me? Or should I use the PowerPoint? So I'm, I'm researching and I'm watching. I've watched more TED Talks than you could possibly imagine. And I'm like, okay, they, they do this, they do that. 
okay, I've seen good ones with the PowerPoint. I've seen good ones without. And what I noticed is I said, you know what? I'm going to ask my closest friends and family. I'm going to take a poll. 12 people that I love that know me well. I said, sister, should I, should I use a PowerPoint? She goes, yeah, something to back you up. Use a PowerPoint. I go, mom, should I use a PowerPoint? She says, no PowerPoint. Use you. I say, bro, should I use a PowerPoint? He goes, yeah, you need the stats to back up what you've done. I said, cool. I go through the entire list. Six, six. I put the list down and I go, what was I thinking with an even number? I'm getting ready for the biggest speech of my professional life, right? And professionals, people that I love are telling me, no PowerPoint, PowerPoint. And it's 6-6. Six, six. And I'm like, how am I going to break this tie? And I'm like, wait. I didn't ask one person. I didn't ask myself. I did not ask myself what I would be most comfortable with to present. When we talk about public speaking and why I say authenticity engages, listen to me here. You have to know yourself before you go and seek advice. You have to speak from the gut before you go and ask. Because when you're talking to an audience, an audience can feel realness. And you have to be yourself. If you can't be yourself, you will never engage in the way in which you want to. That I have to listen to me first in order to really deliver a message that informs and inspires. Number two, awareness. Awareness connects the speaker to the audience. And this is what I mean. And so one of the speaking events it comes, comes about, and I get the opportunity to, to, to speak in, in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And before the event, you know, you want to be early, you want to be ready, know your audience, know your crowd. I hear like all this partying type thing going on. I'm like, what's going on? And I go down, and they have, uh, they have an open bar. And they had the open bar for hours. They were lit, guys. <laughs> they were lit, right? And so, listen, I go to the event. I'm in my mind, I'm thinking it's going to be a professional, motivational, this is what you need to do. And I walk into a party. And so as a speaker, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, like I was prepared to do one thing. I flew all the way here and there's literally a party in the audience. Like the the wave, the energy is like, hey, I hope this guy's cool. I hope he's going to, you know, have a joke. And I'm like, that's not the content that I delivered. So I get up, they call me up, and I walk up just like this. And they're as quiet as you guys are. They're literally staring at me like, what's this guy about, right? And at that moment, I decided right before I got up, I said, you know what? I'm going to tell a story. And I said, before I begin, I just want to let you guys know I'm, I'm coming from Sacramento. And I hopped on the plane and I met an individual and we're chatting it up. And he thought I was going to give a presentation in Colorado. And I told him, no, I'm actually giving a presentation in Sioux Falls. And the look on his face was blank. And, I, and he said, excuse me, I, where? And I said, Sioux Falls. And he said these three words, and I'll never forget it. He said, are you sure? And I said that, and there was a man sitting right where you're sitting. And he literally laughed like he was at a Kevin Hart special. <laughs> he lost, I'm talking chair went back. He's laughing so hard. It's about a crowd of 200 that everybody, you guys ever caught this? When somebody laughs so hard that you have to laugh? The whole crowd literally just starts busting, laughing, and I start laughing from the stage. I'm like, man, if this is how it's going to be, let's have a good time. And at that moment, I realized something because the old me would have been so stuck on the preparation part that I would have never had the audacity. I would have never had the awareness. Situational awareness is what I mean. When you speak or present, 
sometimes things will not go as planned. And there's no way to plan for it. And what you have to do is be fluid and malleable and ready to rock with the situation. And if you have situational awareness, what often can happen is you can play on what is happening. I said, huh, open bar, alcohol, social event, I'm coming with motivation. If I switch it just like this and tell a joke and let them know I'm not all serious up here, the audience will be on my side. Number three, audacity. Audacity informs and inspires. You have to be bold in order to give a speech that's going to last. How many of you guys experience fear when you speak? Fear of an opinion of other, fear of being criticized, fear of not being good enough, fear of tripping up on a word, fear of what you look like. We know that fear drives most of us. And I'm here to tell you that audacity is what you need. Boldness is what you need. If you want to deliver something and absolutely be transformative, I'm, I'm passionate about this. I believe this because I live this. I'm telling you, you have to be bold. You can't half step into your presentation. You have to be bold. You cannot half step into your presentation. And one of the ways in which we do that is we deliver a story. Story includes power. Stories are powerful. They're the most powerful thing that you can do when you open your mouth because the brain operates in pictures and a story has the ability to paint the picture in the mind of another individual. They did a study about TED Talks and the top TED Talks, I'm talking the million, the million hits, the top TED Talks, 85% of them were story centric. Stories can be crossed over to any industry at any time. Whether you're telling your personal story, whether it's Martin Luther King delivering a speech, whether it's a president of a country, a story is the thing that has time sit and lets you go like this. Huh. Story is powerful, right? Never tell a story without making a point, but never make a point without telling a story. Like, look, use the story to drive home what you're trying to do. It crosses every industry, every, anything that you want to do, a story will get you there. A story will get you there. <laughs> That's very true. So I like that, um, that, that, that video personally. I thought it was actually very well presented. Uh, so, but no, I, I like a, a, a few of the points that he made, but the primary one is the story. Your story is powerful. So that's really the point of this whole session. I want you guys to really start understanding the importance of getting out there and telling your story. Um, public speaking can really help you to grow your business. If you want to take this serious, and I know you all do, I've talked into each and every one of you uh, individually, and I know you all have big plans for this in the future. I know you all want to take this to the next level. Well, it's going to require you to do some speaking. If you really want to take it to that level, so there's a, there's a multitude of reasons for it. Here are some of them here. Um, yeah, you want to talk about building your confidence, your confidence in not only in yourself, but your, in your ability in the product, in the network. Start doing some public speaking. Get out there and don't be afraid if you make a complete mess of it. Who cares? Do the best that you can. But again, you're going to reach more people. You're definitely going to increase your sales. Um, sales meaning as far as if you're looking to sign people up, if you're looking to grow your business faster and you want to get that higher commission, go out there and do some public speaking. Um, you're going to build credibility too within your team. As, as we grow, as you grow, as you expand, you want to make sure that you're the one that the people are looking to. 
that the people that you're bringing on board, that the people that the people are bringing on board. You don't need them always looking up as, you know, as, you know, as far as me or as far as some of the other joint venture partners. You're the one they should be looking up to. And you're going to do that by doing trainings, by doing public speaking, by doing presentations. You'll build credibility. So I really want to try to drive that point home to you guys. If nothing else, well, that's the primary message behind everything that we're talking about in this presentation. Uh, some great places for you to do some speaking if you're not comfortable uh, or if you just want to, you know, hone your craft, improve your skills. Toastmasters. I'm sure wherever you're at, I guarantee if you look it up, there's a, there's a local chapter of Toastmasters. Toastmasters is primarily a group where all they do is practice public speaking. It's, it's just local people from various businesses, different industries, or just people who just have a fear of speaking in public. They will get together. They will practice together. They will take turns doing presentations and they will support each other. So Toastmasters, if you have an interest in it, it's something that if you're looking for something in the area of personal growth, if you're looking for more groups to get involved with, Toastmasters is a fantastic one. Or just even look up at your local library. Local libraries always always given opportunities to do some type of presentation. I guarantee you, if you walk into your local library and say, I'd like to do a presentation, advertise for it in two weeks time, I can come in on a Saturday or whatever. If you just have a room that, um, that, I, that I can talk about a system of personal development, I guarantee you, um, they'll let you do it. They're always looking for interesting topics. They're always looking uh, to provide something to their local members. Um, you're not going to get paid for it. It's going to be free, but it's a great opportunity to go in and do a presentation and possibly even reach some people, possibly even get some prospects. Um, but regardless, you're out there and you're, again, you're becoming more confident, you're spreading the word and you know, whatever happens from there, it doesn't really matter. Um, meetup. Meetup, you can, uh, if you're not familiar with Meetup, go online and, and, and look up Meetup. I know that uh, I, I belong, well, I used to before the lockdown, a, a few different Meetup groups in Dublin. I know they got them all over the UK. I know they're all over the globe. But Meetup, they have everything. You can create a topic and just form a group that'll come and listen to your presentation. Um, so. Meetup would be a great source for you to go ahead and practice doing your presentation, telling your story, um, or even just record it yourself. You know that you can you can just go on to Zoom and just uh, create a meeting, and nobody even has to be there, but just record the meeting, record yourself doing your presentation, and then you can play it back over and over and over again. But it's a great way to go ahead and just practice your, your presentation, your public speaking. Or if you really, if you really want to be courageous, radio, radio or podcast. And trust me, it's not that difficult to get on them. It's not difficult at all, as a matter of fact, to get on them. Um, I've been on a number of different radio stations and nobody knew who I was. I'll tell you exactly how I did it. I went online and I just typed in um, into, into Google local radio stations um, in Ireland, UK, different parts, primarily uh, the UK and Ireland. And there's hundreds of them. And you'll get their email address. And then all you do is you just go into your Microsoft Word, you do a mail merge, and you, you, you create a spreadsheet with all the email addresses. I think I've got about 250 of them that whenever I want to go ahead and try to get on air, 
I just create a message saying that um, Patrick Allen from One Source um, uh, ICT uh, or One Source Personal Development Network um, once I, I did it. What was the last one I did before um, New Year's resolutions? I did it back in January. I did some, but now I get different times radio stations contact me if they're looking for a topic for someone to talk about anything to do personal development uh, related. But all I did was I went on and I went, I just talked about the One Source Personal Development Network. As a matter of fact, if you go on to our website, if you look on their latest news and radio interviews, um, I've done a lot more than this, but I think there's about four or five of them up there. Nothing great, but again, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity, and that's that's a real opportunity because you don't know what they're going to ask you. You don't know, you know, what you're going to get hit with. So, and but I tell you what, you'll build up your confidence. But if you know your stuff, and you all do, at this stage, you all know the system well enough that you can go out there and you can brand yourself an expert under the one source personal development system. And you can just talk about how to improve your relationships, you know, your how to increase your level of health and fitness, how to create more balance, talk about how to control and direct your focus. Go on and do a session on how to identify and live your life's purpose. Talk about creating a purpose statement. Whatever the case may be, you guys have got so much material uh, at your disposal that you can go out there and you can promote. Um, again, b build your own confidence, capture those leads for yourself, and again, spread the word. So I, I think that's a really good opportunity. If Again, I understand it's not for everybody, guys. I'm just giving you some suggestions. You might not be confident enough yet, and that's okay. But do some podcast. You know, podcast, no problem. You get on podcasts. Like I was on the um, one of the best ones I did. As a matter of fact, she just promoted our workshop for us last weekend. Is the uh, the work the uh, work life balance show uh, with Mel uh, Melissa? I can't re I remember her surname, but she's lovely. Actually, I, I talk to her all the time on LinkedIn. But um, I went on her podcast. And uh, she gave me, I think it was like 50 minutes that we just talked. And it was great. And uh, I see her on LinkedIn all the time. Like I say, when we had the workshop coming up there just last weekend, um, I dropped her a message and she went and she shared it on LinkedIn. So again, and she shared the interview as well, um, a couple of times actually on LinkedIn. As a matter of fact, I know, if I, and I'm not going to say her name because I don't know if she's here or not. But I know there's somebody in, in the group, I don't know if she's here with us or not today, uh, who actually found us through that interview because she told me she found us through that interview. So again, great opportunity, guys. So it's, it's, and it's really not that difficult. Just create a spreadsheet, put all the email addresses in there, start gathering them all. Just do, uh, you know, just go on to Google, type in, radio station, podcast, contact information, you'll get tons of them. And then just do a mail merge. And if you don't know how, go on to YouTube. It's really easy. Uh, but you can blast out literally tens of thousands of emails with one mail merge. No problem. So I just keep that spreadsheet with all the different um, email addresses that I've captured for different radio stations and podcasts. Whenever I want, whenever I have time and I want to go ahead and I want to promote something, or if I just want to do another interview, I guarantee if I went on today and, and, and did a blast within a week, I'd probably have two or three that I would be on. Really not that difficult, but it's a great way to go out there. Um, but the best place, and you know, you know what I'm going to say, is right here. We're, this is a safe place, guys. Like we're just saying, we're building a community. I'm happy, very happy. I'd be ecstatic. Anybody, anybody in our group that wants to get up and do a presentation, I don't care if it's a half an hour, if it's 10 minutes, doesn't make a difference. If you want to tell your story, if you want to just tweak it a little bit, if you want to rehearse it, come here and do it. 
if you have some special skill set that you it doesn't even have to be about the system but you just want to do a presentation and you've got something that you think would benefit the group like i'm whatever if rather it be the law of attraction or nlp or um if if you're some type of uh, therapist of some sort whatever you want to talk about if it's going to benefit the group and it's valuable information within reason obviously we don't expect doesn't have to be anything insanely you know special or anything but just something that a message you want to share by all means co contact me we'll make a slot that we'll get you in and you come here and you do the presentation but here's the probably the safest place for you to do it so just moving on i wanted to make sure that everybody is still doing their purpose you know, we just had the workshop last week and we spent a lot of time. We talked about the focus. We talked about the balance. And I know you guys are doing that because you're putting in your scores. But I'm really hoping, really hoping that you're continuing to say that purpose statement. Really important, guys. Um, again, because that's what's going to get you through when times get tough. I can tell you right now from the amount of the length that I've been doing this, the amount of people that I've worked with, I know the people who aren't doing it because they're the people that primarily when they hit the wall, when things get a little bit tough, and it does for all of us at some point in time, things get tough. This system doesn't eliminate any of life's problems. That's for damn sure. Uh, we all have different personal problems. We all have challenges we got to overcome. But again, we want to make sure that uh, here's um, my sister call. Lovely. I'll get back to her. So, <laughs> um, but again, it doesn't eliminate any problems or anything like that. So, sorry, I'm just going to turn that off. Apologies, guys. Um, but again, your definite major purpose is what's going to get you through it. Your definite major purpose by programming your subconscious mind. When you run into those challenges, when you run into those difficult times, for whatever reason, whatever you get hit with, well, that's what's going to get you through it. If you haven't been conditioning yourself, you're going to have a difficult time. And you're going to find it very tempting to just say, well, I'm just going to put that off for a week or two. I'll get back to the system. I just need to go ahead and need to take a break or I need to do no. You do that, I guarantee you, you're going to take a break for two, three days. Two, three days going to turn into two, three weeks. And then all of a sudden, a few months are going to go by. And you're going to be like, oh, yeah, I should have stuck with that one source thing. That was a good opportunity. I should have really stuck with it. You need to condition yourself each and every day. And what I want to share with you is a new person. I won't say who it is because I, I, I didn't, get, uh, didn't get her permission to share her name. But I did get her permission to share what I'm going to uh, share with you now. She sent me this on WhatsApp. Um, and it was I was actually really impressed. So I asked her if it's OK if I share it with the group. But I tell you what happened. She sent me a message and she said, Patrick, I know. Um, you said that we didn't have to share our definite major purpose statements, but I just wanted to share it with you. And she sent it to me. And it was all written out and it was lovely. So I just replied to her and she did this through WhatsApp. So I just replied to her and said, OK, now I want to hear it. So what I want you to do is I want you to send me a voice message through WhatsApp of you saying your definite major purpose. And obviously, I want to hear her as she said it, but I just, she just piqued my curiosity. I thought it was really good. And I want to see what kind of emotion she was putting into it. And she did. She sent it to me in a WhatsApp, and I'm going to ask you guys, anybody who's comfortable, um, again, I don't, I don't, you don't, I know Steve's done it before, others have done it before, got up and said their definite major purpose uh, in, the, in the group at different uh, sessions or trainings we've done, but if you're not comfortable doing that, send it to me in a WhatsApp if you're, if you're comfortable doing so, I would love to hear it, but again, just send me a message through WhatsApp 
or send it to your consultant. If, I, if I'm not your consultant, if you're working with one of the other joint venture partners or, or somebody else, send it on to them. Um, but I would love to hear it. I'd love to hear the emotion you put into it. And um, I would just love to primarily see the words that you're using that really resonate with you. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to play hers for you here now, um, just to give you an idea of what some of the new people are doing. My definite major purpose for today is to live my life to the best of my ability as a happy, healthy, motivated and abundant woman. The reason I choose to live this lifestyle is because I know that living this way on a consistent daily basis will virtually guarantee I will develop and enjoy a loving and a respectful relationship to myself, husband, children and family, whilst bringing joy and a force of good to everyone I meet. I also know that by living this lifestyle on a consistent basis, I will develop and maintain higher levels of health and fitness. I will have a strong energy and drive to continue to live life every day to the fullest and have the power, strength and enthusiasm to inspire and influence others. In addition, I will keep growing authentically, spiritually and intellectually, obtaining knowledge and wisdom to nurture and guide myself my loved ones, and those who I come in contact with. Last but not least, I know that living this lifestyle will provide me with contentment and fulfilment to not only support financial freedom, but liberation in a rewarding, compassionate service for helping my family and empower everyone I meet along the way. Now, I thought that was great. I don't know, I really, I really enjoyed that. And for, the, for those of you who are working with people, um, I think all of you are, or most of you are at this stage, have the people you're working with, have them send you a voicemail with WhatsApp. Have them read it out to you, if they're comfortable, obviously. You don't push anybody to do anything that they're not comfortable doing. But if they're willing to, if they're willing to share, get them to send it to you. It's great. And again, you get to hear not only the words, because it's one thing to read it on paper, but it's another thing to actually hear it, to hear how they're using their tonality, how they're you know, emphasizing certain words. You can really kind of get a better understanding of you know, what they're looking for, what they're looking to achieve, what their vision is. But I thought that was great. I mean, it was short, it was sweet, but it was to the point. That whole thing took under two minutes and I'm telling you right now, if she if she does that every single morning and every single night, she will condition herself. She will program her subconscious mind. It'll take time. It doesn't take that long, probably about less than 30 days, I would think, on average. But she will condition herself. And when times get tough, when she doesn't feel like taking that action, when she's not feeling motivated, I guarantee you, she will go ahead and it's it's going to kick in for her. So I just want to share that with you. Cause, and, and she just sent it to me actually about an hour ago. Uh, I just threw it in there a minute ago, be, uh, right before uh, we, we jumped on this call. Because I thought it was really good. But I did get her permission. And I know her consultant actually listens to these. Um, she hasn't uh, gotten to the point where she's joining us yet. She probably will, actually. And, and she'll she'll hear it at some stage. But I know her consultant will actually know who it is. So well done. Um, and again, I would love to hear anybody who's got one. If they want to send it to me, by all means. So what else we want to talk about? The workshops. Hopefully, the majority of you um, got the opportunity to attend the workshop, the one-day workshop there on Saturday. So that was a one-day workshop, and that should give you a very good idea of what we do when we work with different select groups, when we work with different businesses, when we work with um, uh, and any, and any group or organization that is just looking to do a one-day workshop. But it doesn't even have to be a group or organization. You guys can learn how to do that. And there's no reason you couldn't. And again, start going ahead and promoting it yourself. 
You can do it through businesses. Once you're a joint venture partner, I should clarify, I apologize. Once you're a joint venture partner, you've got the full authority to go out there and start doing your own one-day workshops, um, teaming up, doing one-day workshops, doing three-day workshops, creating different workshops. So I would really encourage you because that's where the money is, guys. If Again, if you want to really leverage your time, that's what you want to be doing. Um, again, it's not the only way. Again, doing one-to-ones is fine. Recruiting for joint venture partner prospects, fine. There's a multitude of ways that you can go ahead and you can earn a good income with this. But that's a great one. And working with businesses, if you can get some contracts where you go out there and even like if it's just a matter of, say, 9750 and what you're going to do is you're going to go out there, you're going to do a workshop for them, and you're going to do a one-day workshop, but you're also going to support those individuals through, um, uh, through email and WhatsApp, but you get a 90-day commitment. Okay, so it's ninety-seven fifty per individual, per participant, but you get it for 90 days. And hopefully, hopefully, if you get your foot in the door, it can be an ongoing with those. That's what I'm starting to gravita- uh, gravitate towards now. Uh, yeah, it's great to go charge to 195 to go and do a one-day workshop, but I'm, I'm looking at long-term. I'm looking at getting into some of these businesses where primarily – you can walk in and you can get 20, 30 um, individuals, more groups where, again, but you get a 90-day commitment from them. And, again, after the 90 days, hopefully you do a good job and they're seeing results. Ninety-seven fifty a month is nothing for a company to pay to make sure that their, their people are in good shape, that you're helping with their mental well-being, that you're primarily you're keeping them more focused and balanced. They're going to be a lot more effective at work. But getting back to what I was talking about, you've all seen a one day or you're going to, if you haven't seen it yet, because I'm, I'm editing the, um, the, uh, the recording now. So I'll be getting it out, out there soon enough. It's six and a half, seven hours worth of material. So uh, there's, there's a lot of editing to do. But uh, you will be getting that soon enough, access to it anyway. and. Um, the next thing to do is you want to see a three-day. So if you're not familiar with the three-day workshops, you can go onto the website. You'll see it's on the website. But a three-day workshop consists of this. Everything that you get in the one day. So it's the one, the first day is the one-day workshop. Okay. Then we do a goal-setting workshop. We spend a day and we go in detail. Not like anything that you and I have ever done before. I'm talking a full day goal setting workshop in depth. So that's the next thing. And then we do another full day on neuroassociative conditioning, not just the introduction. I'm talking a full day devoted to nothing but neuroassociative conditioning. So they'll learn some really good techniques and they'll really get an understanding and be able to implement a lot of things that um, that we do in neuroassociative conditioning. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another, or I'm going to do another. Anybody who's welcome to jo- uh, is interested, we're going to do a goal setting workshop. So it'll be day two. I'm going to do a series of three. I'm going to introduce you guys to the three day workshop. You've ar- you're, you're already you've already been invited to the first one, and most of you have attended. And if you haven't, you'll get the opportunity to um, get the recording, so you'll see what day one is. On June 26th, Saturday, we're going to do it. It's from 10 to 4. Uh, it's going to be a little bit shorter um, because the workshop, the goal setting workshop is usually a little bit shorter. Um, but you guys are all welcome. You're all, it'll, it'll be another free event. Feel free to go ahead and share with whoever you want. And again, anybody who wants to participate, feel free to contact me. But that's going to be a real hands-on workshop it's yes there's going to be a lot of presentations yes there's going to be a lot of interaction but it's going to be a lot of giving people a topic i want you to spend some time working on this when they leave there it's not going to be just you know i've got a few goals they're going to have 
detailed, very detailed plans on what they want to do in their relationships, their health, their uh, personal growth, and their finances in detail. And they're going to come up with a really in-depth, massive action plan of everything, everything that they're going to want to do to go ahead to achieve that. And we're going to do short-term, mid-term, and long-term goals. So it's a great day. It's, it's, it's really a hands-on type of thing. Um, so I strongly encourage you, make sure you come to it if you're interested. And I think you should be. So anyway, all right, guys. Other than that, we're going to wrap it up. Um, questions, comments, and concerns, as you know, I'm always available. And again, a big thanks to everybody who did come to the workshop. I really appreciate it. And a special thanks to everybody who participated. And I know there was some other people who did volunteer to do some things. Um, so maybe we'll get you in the next one. I, you know, I, again, I want to give everybody the opportunity. And if it goes well, who knows? We might start doing them on more of a regular basis uh, as a recruitment tool. We'll see how we get on. But uh, it was a good opportunity. And um, I, I enjoyed it. Anyway, I hope you guys did as well. So look, we'll wrap it up at that. As always, um, I want to say thank you. You need anything at all, you know I'm there for you. All right? Okay, guys, we'll see you all soon. Be good.